hear me? Yeah? I'll avoid the mic so that I can walk around freely. No, but you can hear me, right? Morning. So there's a favorite tagline goes, how's the Josh? Huh? Oh God, the energy ran out. It's fine. So first of all, Dr. Vaidya and uh, Shastra team and all the students, thank you very much. And thanks for giving me an opportunity to exchange a few notes. Because when it comes to new technology areas, I strongly believe you all know more than us. Because we all are caught up in our everyday life. As a student community, you know, you know much more than because you have an opportunity to learn, to scan, you know, to scan, to browse. And you will have visibility to a lot more technology than all of us. So before I even start, how many of you here want to be, do, get a job and after this four years is over? How many of you plan to take a job? OK. How many of you want to do studies further? How many of you want to be a startup? One very, very small. Yeah? OK, let's reserve this question at the end of this discussion, because I would like to revisit this discussion at the end of it and to see what it is. Yeah? When Dr. Vaidya shared the topic, of the theme of at least for the Daksh program and uh, Sixth Sense. And he asked me to speak about automotive Sixth Sense. Initially, I was a little confused. Is it Sixth Sense technologies in automotive? Or uh, automotive leveraging the capability of Sixth Sense? So first, I was just looking at, OK, Sixth Sense technologies. Honestly, I didn't know before coming here what is Sixth Sense technology. So I do my own Google scanning, all that. Then figured out, I said, look, I think are we becoming an another IT industry? Before joining TVS, I was in TCS. So I was not an automotive person. Neither I was a technology person. Don't tell the TCS people about it. So when we actually looked at it, we said, look, IT industry has this glamour of every year to launch a technology. Because that's the only way they can keep themselves relevant. So you will have you know, different technologies launched every year. And every year, they say, this is the technology of the future. And honestly, I don't know why every technology of the future loses after one year. And the next year, you come with another technology. Primarily because you need applications to be developed, you need jobs, and you need to be skilled. I think colleges also have followed suit. You know, so we launched this technology this year, IoT, next year, Alexa. You know, which people talked about. It's very important. Every year you come with. But after internet, what is the next disruptive technology we have seen? Literally changing the lives or changing the business of organizations. We are still searching for one, you know, the perspective. So when it came to Sixth Sense technology, the first question or something which I understood is, is it one technology or is it a combination of technology? Because the moment you say Sixth Sense, there is a camera which you need to hang. There is something which you need to put it in your fingers. Then suddenly you say, I'm marrying a cognition technology with the brick and mortar technology. And you're putting some artificial intelligence and you're bringing it back into the digital world again. So somewhere the digital world and your brick and mortar world started talking to each other. And the output comes this. And that's, then I said, is it really disruption? Is it really going to change the way we all look at our businesses or you know, look at our operations? Maybe not. And that's when the question is, before even I go to the next topic, which is automotive leveraging the capabilities of Sixth Sense, which actually speaks not much about technology, but more about the business which wants to leverage a technology. Then actually you say, maybe will this create some disruption? So what is disruption? What is innovation? We all use these words very often. Innovation is about an idea which changes a particular business process or transforms it. That's innovation, primarily, you know the part. Or which didn't exist before, create a new one in most cases. But in a disruption, if you want to call it, 
it not only creates a new process but weakens the existing process then you actually leave and skip so what does ola did to all of us it's a fundamental disruption of an existing process now we don't actually go through the auto rickshaw you don't need to own a car the ownership of car getting changed existing mode of transport getting changed what did swiggy do it's a household name if you come to chennai if you walk around the town after 10 pm it's only swiggy because i don't have to go wait in the restaurant queue i'll get four restaurants at home my choice enables it what did airbnb did it launched more hotel rooms than marriott or entire hotels put together so what oyo did i think somewhere the opportunity of a disrupting the business at the same time changed the business model so hotels are now struggling what did amazon did so it's primarily weakens the existing system while creating the new then the whole thing arises is will automotive when it leverages the six sense does it have a capability to disrupt the existing system so then you have to question four questions in your mind right one how does automotive can leverage to make a vehicle be it a car be it a train be it an aircraft second how we will leverage this to manage the vehicle whether you want to maintain it or run it every day the third it comes is does it do anything to our business itself the way we are conducting the business and fourth is to all of us what does it do what opportunity does it provide to everybody in this room so we look at the four things how many of you do computer science here pretty high right so you all do it outsourcing you manage applications from remote and now you said we manage their infrastructure from here how many of you ever thought that you can manage a car which is running in palo alto from here because a car is nothing but a pc it's an ip and you can actually manage a car from here and that's the future so i don't want to sit here and talk to you about what all could happen in future because that is crystal ball gazing but i want to come back and tell you what is happening today and what could potentially happen tomorrow leave day after tomorrow and what that presents let's talk about the vehicle what are the new buzzwords in automotive we talk driverless car electric vehicle autonomous vehicle and the moment we say we take it to extreme oh why do we need a driverless car what happens if there is an accident what happens a car has to decide between a bicycle and a man you know what all of you watch yendran one right so what happens whether you want to save the girl or to douse the fire so these type of questions what comes to our mind but let's leave all of that what happened in the last two years when you buy a car there are two words used ml and at this is manual gear and there is a amt which is an automatic transmission what is that the car which is gaining the intelligence to understand at what speed i am going or what acceleration i am putting and changes the gear automatically so where was that intelligence before then all of us saw rear view parking right you can see the camera on the rear and park it that was simple which is a camera work but now it is self parking you don't have to do anything the car can park itself in the road in the side because you don't hit none most of us who drive the car will know it far better parking is the worst thing which we can attempt to do and the car if it parks itself it's very easy the third one happens is all the more important today if you actually go automated valet parking is there which means you go leave the car in the hotel the lobby the car will go automatically and park in the its own parking lot and that's available today so what happened there is a grade of intelligence which is getting added with the combination of an engineering technology which is in the car or with the combination of understanding what is outside and therefore how do i adjust myself but by the vehicle itself it is not by the driver and now there is a technology available which is coming in and we are just launching it in next month is called a mobile eye which means it tracks what is in front of me or in the driver sleeps or drowses it raises an alarm or it shakes him up with a bit with the massage chair and then say drive carefully it tells you how far is that guy if you travel in this speed you will certainly hit this guy so there is something which combines the camera or an optics cognition speed analytics and come back and raises an alarm but 
by the vehicle itself. That was the first last three years of changes. And now suddenly the new ones which are coming in the car are self-management of it. There are sensors in every part of the car. Brakes have a sensor which actually tells you am I slamming the brakes or am I putting it properly? What is the impact on mileage? Now the, the clutches have the sensor. Now there is a new sensor which come on the exhaust pipe because you are going to Euro 4 and Euro 6 which means you can only give 2.5 mm of the pollution, uh, you know, the exhaust one into the air. Based on that, it will keep adding the lubricant or the add blue or whatever into the vehicle. Which means there is a dynamic creation of measuring the pollution and self-adjusting the condition of the car. And you all saw train 18. How many of you heard about train 18? Is there an engine in that? Is there an engine or it's an engine-less? How does that possible? How does that possible? Yeah? Please. There is no engine less. They get engine less, how does it run? Is every coach is an engine. If you see the latest electric scooter which is launched, there is no engine. The motor is in the wheel. And the wheels drive itself. Which means there is a lot of intelligence is getting built in every aggregate of the vehicle. And they can be sensor, they can be artificial intelligence or any terminology we want to call it. Basically intelligence is getting built into these part. Now these are happening in the automobile. And let us not worry about extreme. Autonomous, driverless car, it has its own challenges. And this is not the forum to debate regulatory issues or statutory issues. But the fact remains that there is a traces of sixth sense. I would put it this way, if not an absolute. Because sixth sense has two components, the software component and the hardware component. The software component is all about the computing abilities of your mind, which can be replicated through the infrastructure. What's not able to get replicated is the hardware, where I think God has given us tremendous amount of computing the infrastructure, which outbeats everything as of now. So therefore, the software component is now getting into this vehicle. And that adjusts itself as a vehicle. So if you look at the latest electric vehicle which comes, it manages everything by itself. And it communicates. So what does it communicate? So this is about what's happening in the automotive, in the car. So I was actually, the person who actually helped me to come here was uh, Mr. Roy, I don't know whether he's here, Hariharan Roy. So he is from mechanical. And I asked him a question, you know, when you're from mechanical, how much you learn about electronics? Because he often referred it as core versus non-core, core placement and non-core replacement. The way the future is evolving, there is nothing called core and the non-core. There is nothing called computer science and non-computer science. Because there is an overlay of the digital technology on every core to make it relevant for the future. And that's where all our faculties are going to change. So actually today most of the new businesses which has formed in automotive world are all the people from IT who don't understand the automotive. Across the globe, the number one portal which is in China which is AutoZ is from IBM guy. It's a four billion dollar and it's the fastest growing. So each of it I can cite examples how the overplay of the disciplines are taking place in a much, much more accelerated pace. So somewhere if I looked at it, these, how the vehicles are getting engineered, and I heard about your five workshops just now. What, somebody remembers all the five workshops, I'll give them a gift. I think Mr. Atreya talked about five workshops in Daksh. What are the five workshops? IOT? Huh? Alexa, 3D screen printing, okay, tell me in whatever the scenarios we discuss in this vehicle, all the five technologies are available. Alexa is a, just imagine a situation, 3D printing, we all know that we can do the 3D printing, we can scan the image and get it printed and people will say metal is later 
I will do it in silicon or whatever be it, you know, we talked about it. But today, BMW real time manufactures its bearings or wheels on fully 100% 3D printing. Which means it decides the spec in its plant, it communicates the digital data to the, the 3D printing guy, he creates the mix dynamically with the laser, and as a laser jet printing types, the thousand of bearings get printed in front of your eyes. So where is the concept of a plant? So where is this automotive manufacturing plant? We all see lathes, people with blue standing there watching a production line. Doesn't exist even today. The next two years it will accelerate it. Which means, the why I was actually trying to point that out is, the way an automotive is getting designed or manufactured is now changing. Because the engineering component is lesser. The digital component in the comp aggregate is becoming higher. Or the software is becoming higher. So it is in now saying it is no more an object. Uh, which, you know, in a, a philosophical sense we say chit and achit. It is no more a chit. There is a lot of other component is getting added to it. And that is how the, the car is getting built. An automotive is getting built. Which means it has, I would say, at least half of the sixth sense capability which we think we need to have, it's in the car. Let's leave the vehicle as it is. When you drive the vehicle, how many of you see the dashboard? What are the changes you see in the dashboard? Earlier it was just the kilometer, reading, speed, fuel. Now? Digital display is fine. What else? Now you actually see, check your tire pressure. You will see your oil engine lubricant is low. Please change it. So how does that communicate? Which means the intelligence which you have sensor, which you have put it in your device, aggregate, is communicating with an error code the chip to say please change it and it's communicating to you that's the first sign of real integration of i would say still we have not entered into cognition part of it we're just talking about the condition of the aggregate the intelligence to know that this aggregate needs to be changed and that is inter talking to multiple other environments, which is your IoT workshop. Once this happens, what do I do with it? I have to go and get it repaired. So I was driving my car. It suddenly said, check the tire pressure. My problem is it's night 11.30 in the Dindivanam Chennai Highway. And all the nitrogen gas thing I've closed. I don't know how many kilometers I can go like that. So just imagine a scenario when that error code goes to a cloud and from the cloud the answer comes, don't worry, for the next 60 kilometers you can run. So what happens? Every sensor in your automotive is now getting pushed into the cloud and there is a AI into the cloud which reads these error codes with the way the solution provided by the manufacturer communicates back that error code into you. Just like the distance part of cognition which is felt by the mobile eye, similarly the repair component of it. Now where do I take it? Then I have to say, actually just imagine this gets integrated for some time with Alexa, and Alexa tells there is a workshop five kilometers from now, get it there. So what happens now? There is Alexa, there is IoT, there is AI, and it's all happening in mobility. Because this is created when you are driving, and you are consuming when you are driving. There is no enterprise, there is no call center. And now this is going to the cloud. In one year from now, there will be somebody who will come and say, no, no, I will do edge computing. 
because a car throws 25 gigabytes of data every minute. 25 gigabytes of data comes out of a car or a truck. It has to be computed, analyzed. That chip, edge computing or extreme computing, whichever terminology you use, can be put in the car itself. So the data generation, the consumption, the analytics, the artificial intelligence, and machine learning to talk between the devices and respond back with the query where you can get it serviced will happen by the car itself with a little bit of help from people like us. So now you saw how the automotive is getting made or changes and now we are saying how the automotive can be managed better which means now suddenly from nowhere there will be Mr. Atreya who will come and say, Sir, I want to do a startup. I will put all the error codes with me. I will sign up with the customers. I don't know whether you have learned names like, you know, TVS Auto Assist or Go Bumper or Go Mechanic, Your Mechanic. And the moment we see mechanic, it's an earlier thought that there will be dirty clothes, somebody sitting in the road. That has changed. Now an IIT graduate runs pit stop. Because all you deal is with software. There is nothing behind you have to go under the car to data service. Suddenly, the role, the people, the skill set, what is to require to manage the vehicle is changing. Method of doing is changed. So we ran a first pilot of servicing a car in indoor from Cochin. Because all I have to read is what? Error codes. And I have to scan it and it comes to my cloud from Cochin, a technical call center answers, go here and get it done, change this part. The problem starts there. Which part do I put? Because there is no catalog of parts. Somebody have to scan all the parts, create a catalog and match it to the vehicle because in Maruti Desire, there are four versions, the part could be different. Which means there has to be an image. Now, the mechanic or a shopkeeper in indoor or Paul Alto might not know that it's a right part. Amazon doesn't know what is the right part. So what do you do? You do the imaging there. Rest is all computed and compare it with the original. Say, yeah, it's a right one. Press it. And the pressing can happen on the phone or if you have a sixth sense technology, it can happen on your hand because as you scan, like, I don't know, in Yendran you will see suddenly a hologram image comes in front of you. The part image comes, say, press it. It's possible today. I don't know how many of you have gone to your optical imaging lab. You have a scanner in your college. How many of you have gone there? I think Daksha has more thing. We should do a side trip to all these people. <laughs> you know, to what all you have in your college. So it's like, if you go there, you take a part and scan it. Then you go buy a part from the mechanical store. Try to do it with your mobile phone. It should work. And if it works, you have the technology in Shastra itself. Suddenly, this is where cognition, data, uh, analytics, AI, Machine learning, cloud combines together. So the next disruption, which I strongly believe after internet, is the mobility. Mobility doesn't mean mobile app. Mobility is your capability to raise a request, consume the service, and have it as you are on the road. Whether it is a service like a Swiggy, or it is an automotive repair or if it's a banking so you all see many ads of phone pay and all that but basically it's a combination because it has lots of intelligence stacked in so when i looked at six sense i didn't view it in a short view of sensory versus this i looked at the combination of cognition which is sensory plus intelligence what you do and with the permutation and combination, how do you deliver the right solution? Because that's what we do in our normal life. 
So we are talking about three. We talked about how do you make the vehicle, how do you manage the vehicle. Now let's come to third. Then how the business will run. Today, there are a lot of new models. Ola showed first. So for example, we at TVS are pioneering to say, can I actually put a small dongle in the car and read the error code centrally, set up our own service networks or with partners who wants to come and join and actually send the car directly to the service center to repair, which means you don't have to go through a roadside garage. There is no need to do it and change the business model completely. There is an opportunity to change the model. And if I have to map it with the skill, we can do that for globally. So US has the largest dealership environment. The average age of the dealer is 62. And he doesn't know anything about technology. Which means all those customers has to seek technology solution outside. And who is providing that solution today is Best Buy. Because Best Buy had technologists. It's the largest electronic retail store in US. And all their sales has gone to Amazon. So they figured out how do I use this technical people. They formed geek squads. They go with the laptop wherever the dealer service center is, plug in and tell them what to do. Now when you plug in there or you plug from here is no difference. So actually you can do it. So suddenly the business model of managing a vehicle is changing. Now who can provide it? Anybody who is savvy, who can understand this interplay of technologies, who are all the bright engineers in this room. So now tell me here who wants to be an entrepreneur? Even those five hands went down. Okay, I think that's the success of my speech looks like. Okay, so I'll put it the reverse way. Now that we talked about this landscape of technologies and potential situation, I want to make one offer to Daksh, which Atreya, if he can permit. Shastra sir, if he can help out. We will keep an idea box for Daksh. All the participants over in this room can keep providing ideas to say, this is what I would like to do in the automotive. By leveraging your five workshops or the labs what you already have. The reason why I say is, I'm very happy to share. We are actually signing up with Shastra to set up a virtual reality lab here and the optical scanning and cataloging lab. In fact, if the thing goes well today, we will kick start and April 15th, we will launch it. So, you know, most of you are welcome to join the initiative. We'll have the internships and, you know, the part of it for all of you, some of you. Okay, the reason behind me saying that is that infrastructure you have already, you generate your ideas. The best idea will have a very small reward of 50,000 rupees. And if you want to do a startup, I'll fund it. The reason being is, we are living in a golden era. The golden era is, nothing is taken as a status quo. The digital technologies and the ability of that is providing an opportunity to look at every process from the beginning. And say, why do I need to do this? Can I do it differently? Can I actually do an altogether different thing which it can turn it around? And that's an opportunity which all of you have. And that is what the existing industry is struggling to cope up with. I think that freshness provided, you don't look at all this in silo. The academic environment gives exposure to these. The business exposure gives you to the, see the interplay of these. I don't think anyone will say, I want to be an Alexa expert, because it's just a search engine, combined with certain text-to-speech technology. You combine that with IoT, you combine that with the 3D, you create new business models. The future is in the interplay of it. Sixth sense is nothing but interplay of these capability, which exist in your natural self. Just now technology is getting a maturity to smell it. The potential is huge because, I, I'll give an example. I was actually with somebody on healthcare and he said, Raghavan, to come out with the material, it takes four years. Because the polynomies and the permutation and combination I need to do takes the computing alone takes three to four years. And this company actually has created a virtual infrastructure in every academic institution. And the doctorate's there. And their value is I will reduce it to two months. Which means today I launch a new material 
it's three to four months against four years. And that's the type of, basically, the intelligence, what it required to be computed, is getting merged. And that's the future of cloud. That's why no more ERPs are fashionable. Nobody now wants to say, I want to be an SAP specialist. Gone. Nobody wants, that's why the ERP companies don't get any valuation. Because I don't think anyone aspires to go join SAP or Oracle today. They are dead. The future is with the Googles of the world or Microsoft of the world have successfully molded the cloud and embedding each layer into it which actually simulates the intelligence. I will leave it at that and thank you very much for giving the opportunity. Good luck.